town, I'd like to take this opportunity to have a moment of silence for our dear friend and colleague, Councillor Bill Gabani, who suddenly passed away. Bill was a dedicated councillor who always had the town of Cobalt and its ratepayers at heart. He always did what he thought was best for everyone. Rest in peace, our dear friend. Thank you very much. Item, clue, item two, disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Don't see any. <clears throat> item three, approval or amendments of the agenda. Be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the special meeting dated March the 1st, 2022 as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Joe and Pat. All in favor? Thank you. Item four, business. 4.1, bylaw number 2022-9, agreement with Ontario Clearwater Agency, Aqua. Whereas at the regular meeting of February 15, 2022, council adopted a re resolution number 2022-25 and directed staff to present a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with the Ontario Clean Water Agency. Now, therefore, be it resolved that bylaw number 2022-9, a bylaw for agreement of services between Ontario Clean Water Agency and the Town of Cobalt be taken as read a first, a second, and a third time, and finally passed this first day of March 2022. And further, that said bylaw be signed and sealed by the mayor and the clerk. A mover and a seconder, please. Pat and Angela, is there any discussion on the bylaw? Now, Sylvie's here to answer questions if anyone has questions. See no questions, no comments. All in favor? Opposed? Could we have a recorded vote, please? Okay. Yes, we could. Have you got a? Just so I get the uh, alphabetical order right. Okay, thank you. Councillor Radsed. Four. Councillor Anderson. Four. Councillor Dubé. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Wilcox. Against. Mayor Otmer, four. One, two, three, four, five. Five to one. The motion is, is good. Okay, item seven, adjournment. Be it resolved that the special meeting council be adjourned at 6.34. A mover and a seconder, please. Pat and Joe, all in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move right into our committee to hold meeting. Once 
again, I'll call the meeting to order. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Don't see any, okay. Approval amendments of meeting agenda. Be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the committee to hold meeting dated March the 1st, 2022 as presented. Mover and a seconder, Matthew and Joe. Any discussion, comments? All in favor? Terry, thank you very much. Uh, item four, approval of minutes. Be it resolved that council approve the following minutes as presented. Regular meeting of council, February the 15th, 2022. A mover and a seconder. Joe and Matt, is there any discussion on the minutes as presented? Comment, all in favor? Thank you. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Thank you, Sophie. Any inquiries from members of the general public? None. Okay. We have delegate uh, item seven, delegations and presentations. 7.1, Jin Diamond will make a presentation on the official plan, the first draft. There he is. The floor is yours, Mr. Diamond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of committee. I trust you can hear me well. Um, I'll make this short and sweet. I have provided to the town of Cobalt the first draft of the official plan after starting the project spring of last year. Just a very quick summary of what we've done is we've spent um, quite a bit of time in the town. We've met with lots of people. We interviewed lots of people, studied the town and, and the boxes and boxes of background information that you have related to the town. We have um, met with all of the provincial agencies that are involved in the official plan process. And we've also held uh, an, a workshop on dealing with a uh, big strategy, big picture issues. What do we need to do in Cobalt uh, to make things happen? We prepared a uh, background report. We call it a background scan uh, in September of 2021 and prepared the draft official plan in November. When I started this process, I promised John Hodson that I would provide the town with a straightforward, simple official plan, not a rubber stamp of another official plan. And we've done that. We've prepared a very simple, straightforward document that I think deals with the issues that you need to deal with from a planning process and, and a strategic development perspective for the next 25 years. And uh, I know that the quote is sometimes credited to Mark Twain, but I don't think it was. If I had more time, I'd make it shorter. I've been in touch with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and told them, don't expect a 150 page official plan from Cobalt. It's 25 pages and get ready for it. Um, and uh, they seemed enthused by that comment. Um, so I'm hopeful that uh, we can get through the process and do it the way you wanted to do it. Um, there's many constraints to development in, uh, in cobalt that I'm aware of. There's mine hazards and contaminated lands. There's historic sites. And we need to find a way to balance the constraints with the opportunities that are there. And what I've learned in the time I've spent in cobalt is that the people there understand that there's a tremendous opportunity here. We need to be able to explore that opportunity and provide that opportunity. And I'm wondering, um, if the administrator can put on Schedule A of the official plan. We'll just go through the, the schedules very quickly, John. So there's three main maps that go with the official plan. Schedule A sets out the future land use of the town. And um, I wanna identify that the first thing on that schedule is priority intensification areas. Those are areas that we would like to do everything we can to uh, encourage that they develop as quickly as possible. There's, this plan shows what the future development could be. There is environmental protection and hazard areas, which of course you can't develop, but by and large, it shows a future of full development of the town of Cobol. If we can flip to the next schedule. Then on the next schedule deals with transportation and servicing. 
Now, in my role as a planner for developers, when I'm looking at a town to develop, I want to know where the pipes are in the ground, because that to me says this will be available for development immediately um, if all the other tests are met. And so we think this is an important schedule to show where you can develop and connect um, to municipal services, which are readily available uh, to support development. And that's the intent of that purpose. The third map, if you can, John, sets out the development constraints. And I, I talked initially about development constraints. I will admit when I got into this job, I thought, how are we ever going to do anything in Cobalt because of all the constraints related to heritage areas, mines, mine sites, mine hazards, wildlife, wildfire risk, you name it, it's there. But we've prepared a plan that says, this is what we'd like to see happen. And this is how it can happen despite these, these constraints. So it's a very positive forward moving official plan. Um, despite its brevity, um, it, I think it covers everything that's, that needs to be done. So my ask at this meeting and in my presentation is that committee and council read and comment on the draft plan as it is now. Um, I'm happy if you want to contact me directly, if that's okay with the clerk and the CAO and we can have a chat about it. I promise to get back to you. This is a project that I feel personally interested in at this stage and I will respond to you as quickly as I can. I'd like to start the public review process um, in the spring. And uh, before I do that, I need to get your comments and prepare a second draft of, of a plan that we can then present to the public. I also need to have all of the agencies uh, in the province that are involved in planning review the document. And I've asked them to expedite their review of that process. So having done that, our process is that between now and June, we'd like to prepare a second draft of the plan based on your comments and move forward to consultation with the province so that by summertime, we can have an official plan that we know is acceptable to the province, that we know addresses the interests of the people of Cobalt. And we'll find that balance that I talked about between protection of the environment and the historical resources and providing for development uh, of the community. Um, so with that, I don't propose to review a plan. What I have talked to um, John Hodson about uh, is uh, setting up a special meeting of, of council or committee where we can set an hour aside and we can talk about issues related to the plan. I can do it as an educational session if you would like, um, but I would really like to get the municipalities comments on the document within the next four weeks so that we can move forward and ensure that you have a document that you can approve within this term of council. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Jim. Anybody have any questions? Okay, Joe. Uh, somebody came up to me and asked me about tiny homes. Now we have a lot of small really small properties here and I'm thinking that tiny houses would be perfect at these locations but their bylaws prohibits them how do we go about to change this and look and do a little bit more research into tiny homes it's the wave in the future I don't want to be stuck behind like how Elliot Lake did they went into retirement homes and they made a killing with it and the town survived well your, your question is timely um because your issue with tiny homes is your zoning bylaw. And um, today I, I talked to uh, John Hudson about the need to update your zoning bylaw as part of this process. And I won't get into the conversation now, but since I've been working with the town, I've seen a number of things that have been um, prohibiting development that in my view is desirable and appropriate, but it's in your zoning bylaw. So you can't issue a building permit unless the use complies with your bylaw. And in the very near future, in fact, I sent it to the town today, you'll receive a proposal from me to tag on a zoning bylaw update as part of this process. So it can all be done by September and we can deal with things like tiny homes and commercial developments and all of those things that you need to do um, to say that the chief building official can then issue a building permit. Tiny homes is complicated because they're trailers typically. 
Um, there's building code issues related to the size of them, but we can work that stuff out in the zoning bylaw and in the official plan, we provide the policies that say we're going to do this in zoning. I understand they're trailers, but once you build the house and you build a little foundation, you take those wheels off, it does not become a trailer after. That's right. But then it has to comply with the building code. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Thanks. Angela? My understanding is the building code doesn't cover tiny homes as far as um, materials, electrical, plumbing. Um, they don't come under the building code at this time. So is that not something we'd have to cover under a policy? Well, they don't come under the building code because they're trailers. Mm -hmm. And once they become buildings on a permanent foundation, they become subject to the building code. Okay. Uh, Pat? So would I interpret that, that if someone's building a tiny home, to go on there, yes, it's a trailer, but uh, in order to put it on our property and have it there for us to say, yes, you can, then it's got to come up to the regular building code as far as uh, every, you know, construction type and everything. Unless it stays a trailer and you have a mobile home zone already in your bylaw that allows mobile homes, it would just be a question of amending your bylaw to allow people to live in trailers in places other than the mobile home zone. So it's a great example of things that you could do in your zoning that would enable the CBO to issue a building permit. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, going back to your mobile home and you're saying, isn't there a minimum size for a mobile home? Because these tiny homes are a little smaller than a mobile home. Well, that's where we run into building code issues. Um, and um, I think that the building code, and, and don't quote me on this because I'm not a CBO, but I think the building code would allow you to build a 440 square foot dwelling, whereas the mobile home has to be 650. Okay. So at, 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 the, at the 450 point, it could still be a trailer. That's right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I've looked into uh, tiny homes myself uh, for quite some time now, and most of them are built on site. They're not built off site right. and hauled there by wheels. The only reason that the, the wheels thing is because there's a person who has one who's put it on wheels in order to move it. Because our bylaws don't allow for that to happen right now. So he's got to build it off site to get it to where he's going. So it doesn't really conform to trailer regulations. I don't think it's it's built according to uh, building code standards as far as i know yeah okay no other questions yeah i want uh, can i get your email address <clears throat> i think we got it downstairs I do? yeah, Steve yeah i'm i'm real easy jim at municipalplanning.ca okay thanks a lot jim much appreciated thank you i look forward to be back in uh, cobalt in april or may and, okay um, I uh, look forward to your comments on the official plan. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Take care. Okay, I guess we took care of the business arising from the delegations and presentations. Nine, staff and committee reports, 9.1, Public Works. Dave, have you got, uh, have you got anything for us, sir? No, it's, uh, no removal. It's no removal? <laughs> We're gaining on it? No. Yeah. <laughs> little by little, George. Eh? Little by little. Little by little. That's good. No, it's uh, it's looking good. It's looking good. It's uh, I want to congratulate the guys. Uh, they they've done a super job during that storm, and roads were cleared. There was uh, very few complaints. It was good. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Public Works? No. Okay. Animal control. You've got the report here. Is there anything on there you'd like to ask about? Okay. Uh, bylaw enforcement. No questions there. Pete's been pretty busy, I understand. With uh, the snowfall. Yeah, with the snowfall, moving cars and stuff, and that's uh, that's good. How's that going working out with Pete and the snowmobile? 
Um, it's, it's working out. Yep. Right. Go ahead, Matt. For your worship. Uh, question for David, actually. How are people complying when you're asking them to move their vehicles? Are they doing it immediately? Are you getting much pushback? Have you had to tow anything this year? No, they haven't had to tow anything. They're about us. It's totally good. So, uh, so they're know. complying and. Yeah, they can't, they're not fast at it, but they are. Some, some people are moving somewhere. So what do we do in that case? Because I know up on Nickel there, we had quite the berm around a guy who didn't want to move. Yeah, I'll keep towing him out. Oh, Pete did, did tow that? That's how we got around that. But then they moved right back. He got on the other side and rode on the motor on the other side and he put our stall over. What does that do to your labor for the day? I bet you have a great deal with operations when you have someone like that who blocks snow removal. Oh, yeah, you can't tell the road properly. And you have to go back the next day and the allocation of labor, right? Exactly. And if you get a fire, well, you probably won't get down that street from the fire truck. The fire truck could be a lot bigger, but yeah. I well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or ambulance itself, if you want. Are you finding it's better from previous years, though, now that we have the. No, no, he's, he's doing a good job. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. Okay, no other questions, no other comments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, be it resolved that council accept the staff and committee reports as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Matt and Pat. We've had discussion already on that. All in favor? Carried. 10, 10.1. Violet to adopt an election policy for the corporation of the town of Cobalt. Uh, Steve, could you uh, enlighten us on this one? This is just a regular yearly thing in an election year that you have to. Yes, Your Worship. The policy that's brought out every four years as you come closer to a municipal election in the fall. So this is just presenting that we are preparing for the municipal election. Okay. So we'll have a bylaw at our next meeting and pass it. Yes, Your Worship. 10.2, bylaw to establish the use of corporate resources during an election policy. Your Worship, again, it, this is uh, the protocols put into place for this being an election year. Again, this is so we're using the resources for the town of Cobalt. Very good. Thank you very much. 10.3 will be, is there, oh, sorry, Angela, go ahead. Are we developing anything to allow um, people to vote electronically, if need be, just in case something happens with the COVID again? We haven't given it any thought, have we? Worship, we haven't uh, uh, looked down that, that process at this time, but uh, we are in getting uh, notices from the AMCTO uh, about uh, the possibility of having to implement an election or electronic election. So we're just watching it at this time and seeing how the regulations within the province are progressing. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of write-ups on it um, through the subscriptions we get as councillors. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have a, any comments, questions? 10.3 is a resolution to amend the capitalization threshold for other items from $2,500 to $5,000 to allow for inflation. If you wouldn't mind, Steve, do you want to give us a brief overview on this one also? Yes, Your Worship. Resolution here is to amend that uh, for other items from $2,500, $5,000 to include for inflation this year. Comments, questions, no? Okay. 10.4 will be a resolution to direct any surplus deficits, surplus or deficits be transferred to the working capital reserves. That's a yearly ongoing uh, thing that has to happen every year when we, uh, when we do our, our budget uh, process. Okay. Yes, sure. Okay. Are there any questions or comments on any of these items? None? Items for council information, 10.5. OSIF funding notice of $208,243 for eligible projects related to water, wastewater, roads, bridges, and culverts. 
Uh, 10.6 is FedNor funding notice of $93,000 to upgrade Tech Park, Hoboth Historical Mining Camp and Family Project Park. 10.7 is 2022 apportionment for cobalt. Uh, I, it's my understanding that our cost has gone up $1,000 uh, to DSAB. And 10.8 is a letter for council for tiny house queries. This was a couple who had sent in a query about the uh, tiny houses and this is why we're, Joe has given us that uh, little bit of an overview on that. Okay. Be it resolved that council accept the items for council direction and information as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Pat and Angela, is there any discussion on any of those items? Go ahead. Just wondering, do we have, uh, for 10 points, a bit more funding? Do we have uh, a budget put out for that, what we're going to do? Evan, could you, uh, you're working on that, I believe, at this point in time? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't believe we have much more than the nine trees that they're supplying. It's basically we're using the grant to help install some new stuff. Yeah, that's technology. what I meant. Do you have any portion of oh, like, what um, you're doing? Uh, there is a file on it. I uh, personally, I don't know. I uh, have a look at it for I'll have to check. I think it's uh, I think John uh, has that. So, yeah. I'll have to grab it. But uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen a budget personally, but uh, John has told me that there's a match. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, 10.5, basically almost the same question as Pat for that $208,000. Is there any plans for like? Uh, that will be discussed in the budget process. That's uh, yes, yes. Uh, Angela, I know what your question. Is. Um, I'm sorry, but you guys had a technical glitch, or I did because I didn't hear any of that, and I got kicked out and came back in. Oh, well, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, recap maybe. <laughs> okay, where did you get kicked out? I didn't hear a word of what Evan said. Oh, okay. Then you was okay. Rewind to Evan. Well, I see. I see that John's here. I didn't know he was in the meeting, but uh, John may have a better uh, explanation for the the exact budget of the park project than I do, because I uh, I don't believe I've gone. I've reviewed fully the, the budget yet. So, um, if I may, then your worship, the uh, budget. Yep is a, a standard uh, federal government uh, municipal uh, cost sharing. Um, and there's a detailed proposal on what we talked about. This is going back uh, almost a year now. Uh, if you want, I will share the proposal again with council. Um, Please. It still isn't a formal announcement. We haven't heard from the, uh, the Speaker of the House, the federal MP, but uh, it's a fairly detailed one, and we're already looking at maybe piggybacking with a, uh, some more grant applications that are coming in. But basically what it is is a static and non-static uh, exercise areas, kids for kids areas, a shade area, that kind of stuff. Uh, I know Councillor Ad said it mentioned the power upgrade. And not only are we looking at a power upgrade, but we have, we're looking at in-kind lighting. There are a number of light historic lights that we we have that we want to have a lighted area down there also. So it's a, it's a detailed uh, proposal. And um, of course we were waiting for the, uh, the actual approval by the federal government, but that's what it is. It's upgrading the uh, park so that there's more use by the community of all ages and all exercise ability uh, in all ages. Okay. Take care of everybody's questions then. Okay. Nothing else. Okay. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, item 11, other business. I just have a little thing. Uh, former Mayor Sordoretto is uh, <clears throat> receiving a posthumous award on Friday on CJTT radio, apparently, uh, for the tireless work she's done when she was mayor in Cobalt here. So if anybody wants to tune in to CJTT, I think it's at 7.30 in the morning. I'm not sure. Uh, her brother, Bert, will be accepting it uh, for her. Okay. We have no closed session. We have no business arising. Adjournment. Be it resolved that committee to whole meeting of council be adjourned at seven o'clock. All in favor? 
Thank you very much. Oh, mover and seconder. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mover and seconder. Joe and Matt, all in favor? Cart before the horse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I shouldn't say it. It's a French thing. <laughs>